for lack of having somebody else here to speak, I'll be the guy that just talks. Um, so we're welcome to the, the uh, joint meeting of our finance committee, our, our advisors to the select board for making financial decisions, and the select board here. Um, just a first disclaimer, we have Clarence Fantel from the Berkshire Eagle recording, and CTSB is recording also. Is that live? Okay. I'm also mm -hmm. recording, Mr. Chief. Oh, I didn't, oh, okay. Hi, Sonia. Sonia's recording also. Sonia Bykoski. Okay, um, so what we have to do, this is a joint meeting, we have to elect a chair. So it's uh, kind of an awkward way we do it, just somebody makes a motion and we'll vote on it. You know, it's as simple as that, you know, it's, but it could be one of you, or it could be one of us, so feel I free. Make a motion that you should be chair. Right. Second. <laughs> <laughs> now the last election I won, I wasn't all that happy about, but. <laughs> No, okay, but thank you. Um, so the whole purpose of tonight's meeting is to just go over our, um, our uh, um, town warrant for our town meeting, which is going to be uh, December 5th. And uh, to read over this and explain the articles, I'm going to ask our Ms. Mitz if she could do it, because she's, just so everybody knows, she put a ton of work into this. She's learned more about writing... Uh, a new warrant skill article. That I have. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, if you guys have any questions, um, I'm I'm the person to whom most of them should be directed. So, we'll go through this. Article one is the general uh, article that we always have for the town to waive uh, the reading of the warrant and return service, and that everybody does a voice vote, um, and it's generally two thirds. Or, you know, if it seems like it's unanimous, you know, John can go, yay. Um, so that's that one. Article 2, I'm going to change. This is a draft. Um, so it talks about Chapter 90 funds, but what it should say is to see if the town will vote to appropriate from free cash the sum of $1,100,000 to pay for such costs as paving and the maintenance, repair, and construction of town ways and bridges or to take any other action in relation thereto. And the reason that we do it this way is because Chapter 90 actually reimburses for the costs of paving and construction and repair of bridges and roadways, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so we are going to take it from free cash, which was certified as of the end of August. Um, I'm not certain what the exact free cash number is. Um, there's another article here that we'll be talking about that will impact that, uh, but basically, we do this so that we can let the contracts for the paving um, over the course of the winter so we can get a better price. Because if you do this after um, town meeting in May, everybody's clamoring to get bids in and all the bids are generally, the bid costs are higher. So we, we do this in the off cycle. Can I just say yes. one thing? This is, this is typically right around the same amount we, we always do every year. We usually get several hundred thousand back from chapter 90. Um, we're not going to put a list of the exact streets, but that'll be a, at town meeting under the explanation we'll give the streets that are actually going to get done. And it's going to be Hawthorne Street, Franklin, Housatonic, and Church Streets, and the cemetery roads in the town cemetery. That's what Billy told me before the meeting tonight. Do you, do you have a question? Okay. Uh, Mary Beth, do you have a question? Well, I have a... I have a uh, kind of procedural question, and I have a real question. So, sure. my procedural question is: since this is a meeting of the select board and the uh, finance committee jointly, and I'm not on either of those committees, okay. When is the appropriate time for uh, members of the community to ask questions in tonight's the town meeting? meeting? Actually, okay. So, this, not, once we once we decide this is going to be the warrant, it'll be on the warrant. So, town meeting. That's what town meeting's about. Okay. So, no questions tonight at all about any aspect of what is happening. Well, we're not going to turn it into an all-night meeting talking about everything. Okay. You, well, I mean, are you wondering what streets are getting done? Or? No, no, I was just going to ask, isn't there then a need to have the warrant say that the money will be reimbursed from the Chapter 90 funds? Um, I will check with our council about that. Because if it comes out of the general appropriation funds, mm -hmm. then it's out of the general appropriation funds, but then needs to be reimbursed by the Chapter 90 funds. 
Right. So it free seems cash. like that free those two actually, things. Yeah, free cash isn't general, like the general revenues. Those are the ones that are budgeted for specific items. And so free cash is like on the side over here. Like one thing, one thing you have to remember with one thing things. you have to remember with budget. I, I can see what you're saying to make it technically correct. Yeah. But money is money. It's in the free cash and how it, what 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 name it's got on it. No, but, I, that's, you know. But I, I I understand your question completely. Yeah, it's understand more your about, question. It's more about the state has allocated money for these types of things. We want to take advantage of it, and so how do we close that loop to say? Mm -hmm. We're, we're taking out a free cash to pay for it because we want the bids to come in at the appropriate price. But we can't, we can't use Chapter 90 for anything else but this. <coughs> yeah, so, right. so I would think we'd want to say, and then we'll seek reimbursement through Chapter 90. Okay. That's, I mean, good. that's, 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 that's a question. good point. We yeah. can just yeah, make sure about that. Okay, I will Thank check you. with council. Yep. I have a couple of follow-up questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the Chapter 90 issue, I assume that there will be a warrant on, or an article on the warrant at a future town meeting saying that we vote to accept the Chapter yeah. 90 funds yeah. yes. for the state. Yeah. It's uh, when that it, it may not usually, it may not be May town meeting because it takes the state a while to actually ratify it all. Right. Uh, second question: I thought we appropriated for the paving of the downtown last year. We, um, we did a bond issue for um, all of the sidewalks and to do lower Housatonic Street. This is for Housatonic Street for paving. Um, you know how we've been doing the sidewalks in the middle of town? Mm -hmm. um, we're going to pave those roads because they're all dug up because we did the, um, the sewer connections. And that wasn't included in the original amount that we appropriated last year? I no, it wasn't. It wasn't. That was from Calgary's to the jail. Yeah. That was, that, I was thinking about the work that I think. All, the all, all that work around town. In town that it didn't include, the it didn't include the paving. Got it. Yeah. It just included the sidewalks. Yeah. Okay. Um, article three: to see if the town will vote to create, in accordance with Chapter Forty, Section Five B, and other general laws, a special purpose stabilization fund, and further to transfer from available funds the sum of twenty-six million dollars to be placed in said fund, or any other action in relation thereto. And this will require a two-thirds vote. So what these funds are um, is the $25 million from the GE Rest of River Settlement plus the, um, interest. the interest that we've accrued to date, putting that in the fund so that we have that set aside for specifically you know, rehabilitating that area that will abut, you know, Woods Pond and all of that, and any other things that the town decides they're going to use that money for, that will all be decided through town meeting. So this basically sets that fund aside, sets those monies aside, so that we definitely have those funds to do that work when the time comes, and to do any other work that the townsmen, the townspeople may find um, worthy of using those funds. Where is that? Where are those funds currently sitting? Because it says transfer from available funds. They're in free cash. Okay, so should that say transfer from free cash? Um, from available funds or free cash? I don't know. I will find that. Okay. Out. If the last one says free cash, so it's interesting. Okay. Yeah, it would make, seems yeah. to make sense to keep it all Wait. the same way. All the way and then just for consistency's sake again, is there a way to say what the purpose of the use of the funds is for, like what you just described? Um, that's going to be in the explanation. It's better to have it in the explanation than to put a specific thing on it by saying it's a special purpose stabilization fund. You're saying that it's for special purposes. You don't want to make it too narrow because then you commit yourself. So, because we may need this for, you know, a new roof for the library, or I mean, I'm just throwing things out here. You could need it for the, the roof of this building if it were to blow off, or you know, something. So, you want to be um, specific in saying that it's for specific things, but for specific things that the town will decide on at future town meetings. It's going to be confusing at town meeting because it'd be impossible to come up with Everything since, there, since the rest of River project is even started. Yeah. How much money we need for any kind of particular projects around Lennoxdale that we'd love to see done to help Lennoxdale after, you know, when it's all said and done. But there's quite a bit of money there and it could be used for other things also. But there's no earmarks on it or specifics of where it's going to go to. So it's, um, it can't be spent 
willy-nilly, and this kind of keeps you from spending it willy-nilly because it's got to go to town meeting to, to be voted out of there. But it could be used for a lot of different things. It's not limited to any one particular thing. Question. Okay. Article four: To see if the town will vote to transfer from available funds. All right, this like, uh, I don't know if that's free cash or available funds. I will check with Anna. I think it's probably free cash. But okay. It's, everything seems to be available funds, but it's okay. Free cash. I'll double check with Jeff. Yeah. Um, the sum of seventy-one thousand one hundred and sixty-six dollars and forty cents in accordance with Chapter 77 of the Acts of 2023, Section 197 of the Opioid Treatment Special Revenue Fund for the purposes identified in the settlement agreements with opioid distributors and opioid makers. These are the funds that all the towns received um, from the opioid settlement. And these are monies that we provide to like the Rural Recovery Center so that they can administer their programs to citizens throughout South County that need these services because that's not something that we do. As Wild a town. Fire alert. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> Great variance and ongoing wildfire visibility and air quality in the area due to smoke may be reduced. That's it. Okay. The chief called me and said that was gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for giving us he didn't that say it was this soon. We were ready to evacuate this. <laughs> But I, you know, I could, just to speak to that, there's no imminent danger of any health or safety in Lenox. There's a lot of smoke today, yeah. people saw it. And the fire department was running crazy this afternoon, just chasing smoke, you know. People call, I got smoke. You know. And, uh, but there's no, uh, I mean, there's serious stuff down there, but it's not gonna near us. Or any imminent danger, yeah. anyway. So do you guys have any questions on that one? Article 5, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $103,040.31 from the town's short-term rental funds certified at the close of fiscal year 24 to the town manager for transfer to the Lenox Affordable Housing Trust or to take any other action in relation thereto. Um, we did this at town meeting last year. It's 25% of the short-term rental um, receipts. Uh, we as a trust decided to ask for it at town meeting again. It helps us to fund everything that the trust does. And we just received a community development block grant fund um, uh, grant along with the town of Lee for a million dollars to help uh, renovate owner occupant homes and make improvements to those homes. Um, we're gonna need a local match for that. Uh, we have an emergency rental assistance program. They need funds for that. So there are various and sundry purposes that the trust uses these funds for. Quick question. Sure. So I applied for that fund when it became, uh, when the application mm -hmm. process started. I think it was November or December of last mm -hmm. year. To date, I have heard nothing from anyone about being able to. That's because we're just signing the contracts right now, and then the program coordinator. We'll be getting in touch with everyone who filled out one of those applications, and you will undergo the application process in full at that time. So, if we, if we appropriated 100 grand or so last year for that, and now we're doing it again, but nothing's been appropriated, are we kind of duplicating that expense again? Um, no, we're not duplicating the expense. The money goes into the trust. The trust holds funds in order to do various community housing things for the community. Um, and that's everything from the first time home buying program to this block grant home rehab program to the emergency rental assistance program to other opportunities that may become available as time is, goes on. Is there, um, do you anticipate that contract being oh, yeah, in it's, the near yeah. future? Oh yeah, yep. Okay. Yep, very soon, like within the next month, within okay. the next 30 days, yeah. Okay, great, thank you. Yep, any other questions? Okay, Article 6, to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw by deleting Section 9.2 Accessory Dwelling Unit, replacing it with a new Section 9.2 Accessory Dwelling Unit, by deleting the definition of Accessory Dwelling Unit in Section 4 Definitions, and replacing it with a new definition, and by deleting H.4 Accessory Dwelling Unit in Section 5.2 Table of Uses, and inserting a new A.3 Accessory 
accessory dwelling unit in Section A of residential uses as set out in the handout that will be available at town meeting in substantially the same form as discussed at the Planning Board's November 12th public hearing. And this change will require a majority vote. And uh, there was a public hearing with the Planning Board. Um, if you have any questions, you can ask the Planning Board. Uh, Article 7, to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw by deleting and replacing the existing definition of short-term rental from Section 4 definitions with a new definition of short-term rental. And by amending 8.4 short-term rental of residential properties by adding 8.4.2.5 to general requirements for all short-term rentals, thereby prohibiting the use of accessory, accessory dwelling units as short-term rentals as set out in a handout available at town meeting and discussed at the planning board's November 12th, 2024 public hearing. And that change will require a two-thirds vote. Yes. May I request that a copy of that be posted on the town website? So that it is. It's okay. current. They're both currently up there. Thank you. Yep. Yep. That's it. Okay. That's it. So, um, so we just need to know if you guys are going to approve this because these all say approved by select board or approved by the planning board and generally the draft um, comes with you know approved by select board approved by finance committee so i don't know what you guys want to do if you're going to have a meeting of your own now or yeah i think any questions from our team mm -hmm. we should go ahead and vote on the appropriations items then. Um, as a whole everyone uh, you want to go through it one by one does anyone have any holds on any specific items? No. If not, then I think we can go ahead and vote on them all at the same time. Just point of order, should we only be voting on the ones that impact appropriations? For the so I think this would be like Articles 2, 3, 4, and 5. We typically do not, we're not going to vote on planning for articles, so just 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. Okay. Do you want to make that motion? Uh, I make a motion that the Finance Committee approves Articles 2, 3, 4, and 5. Second. All those in favor? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, just have a question. Did you want to make your motion that they're approved with the wording suggested changes that we discussed tonight? Typically when we approve, they are subject to those changes, but yes, let's clarify that. So I make a motion that the Finance Committee approves Articles 2, 3, 4, and 5 subject to the changes that were discussed at tonight's meeting. As long as our attorneys agree that they should be changed to that, right? Yes. Okay. Second again. <laughs> Still in favor. <laughs> okay, troublemaker. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, so, um, no further discussion. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 None opposed? So, that gets us to uh, able to go to town meeting and I just want to say it in front of the camera and all. Town meeting will be at Lennox Memorial Middle High School, uh, 197 East Street uh, on Thursday, December 5th, 2024 at 7 o'clock p.m. And we'll act on, on all these articles. Hope to see you there. Hank? Motion to adjourn the joint meeting. Second. So moved. Okay, welcome to our uh, regular select board meeting for today, uh, November 20th. Who is, who's recording? Sonia, are you recording? The CTSB is recording. And I don't know if Clarence Fanto left his recorder here on, but he probably will record it afterwards. I just want to say that. Um, announcements from the chair. First thing I have is, um, in, everybody know, knows about the fire in, in, uh, in Brick Arrington. And the chief called me this afternoon just to, just to announce that there's no imminent danger in Lennox. Yeah, if you're, as Dave said, some breathing problems, it might be a little rough, but um, there's no imminent danger of health or, or safety or anything like that. So there's nothing really to worry about as far as that goes. Hopefully we're gonna get a day of rain tomorrow and make it, knock it down a whole bunch. Uh, the only other thing I have is, uh, at this point in the meeting, we usually approve minutes from our previous meetings. And uh, um, apologies, but we've, that's kind of dropped through, that dropped through the cracks. It's been an issue, a problem with us actually getting them done. So our esteemed, esteemed colleague here, Max Scherf, has volunteered to take minutes from now on until uh, we get things sorted out, straightened out.
So thanks for doing that, Max. I know okay. it's one of those thankless jobs, but I just wanted to sell it because people ask about the minutes and when we've launched story, but we're working on it. Okay, um, is there anybody here for Citizens Open Forum? Sure. Oh, sorry. Sonia Bykowski, 225 Main Street. I just wanted to uh, request that for the uh, special town meeting, we have working microphones this time, and also the ability to do electronic voting. And since we're gonna be at Lennox High School, I, I assume since it, that's always been the way it has been in the past, it will be that way again on the 5th, is that correct? All right, let me talk to town clerk because we talked about that today. Working microphones should just be a normal thing at yes. the school. Um, and we've thought that it's going to be a, not a very big meeting yeah. that we can handle it without the electronic voting, but I'll run that by her again, you know, say that I, somebody I'm has. requesting that, that those two things. Right, well, I'll, I'll run it by her. Yeah. It's her call. But, uh, um, I, 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 I would think the moderator would probably be the person who... Um, well, she's got to bring the, the voting things. So okay, yeah, it's kind yes. Of yeah. All yeah. right, thank yeah. you very much. But we'll duly note it. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you, Sonia. So uh, that's it for Citizens Open Forum. And Mr. Roach, can you read the consent agenda? I certainly will. Uh, <clears throat> the consent agenda. Auditorium use request. The Berkshire Potters Collective, December 6th to 8th for holiday pottery sale, includes request to place a sign in front of the town hall during the event. Lilac Park use request. Rabbi Levy for a yearly event first day of Hanukkah and to display a menorah throughout Hanukkah. Municipal parking requests. Oh, I'll put a whole that over too. You do? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Lennox Community Center requests the use of the municipal parking lot for community bus trip, pickup, place, and uh, day parking for the event. So I'm going to hold on that. So we've got one we can vote on and then the rest we can uh, hold. Okay. Sure. Okay. So. I make a motion to uh, vote on the auditorium use request. Second. Any further discussion on that? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. So we got Lilac first. You're first. Yeah, Lilac. Um, last year, uh, Rabbi Levy, um, this is the first year we did it, and he had a beautiful ceremony the first day. And it was attended by a lot of people. It was very well attended. It was very nice. And I just want to, I want to make sure that we were issuing him a permit to put up um, the menorah again, and last year was we talked about the size last year. It's about six feet or whatever, and exactly where it has to be. And I just want to make sure that it's in our minutes or in the in the uh, when we vote that it's all going to be in the exact position that it was before. Okay, if you can add so that. So I will add that. So the Lila Park recluse, uh, request Rabbi Levy for a yearly event on the first day of Hanukkah to display the menorah throughout Hanukkah. And it is of the same appropriate size and location as the previous year. Second? Cool. So it wasn't second, I had a question. I was uh, you, I had a question you, about the banner. Right. Let's we're on the menorah. Yeah, we're on the Oh I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those all those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And about the municipal uh, parking request, uh, the Lennox Community Center is going to New York City on November thirtieth. They'd like to just make sure that everybody parks in that municipal lot that's in back of Berkshire Bank. They'll be gone between um, 7.30 a.m. and returning about 10 p.m. So they just thought it would be more convenient if everybody could park there. They'll bring the bus in, pick up everybody there, and then drop them. They'll be able to access their cars and safely leave because that's all the parking area instead mm -hmm. of parking in front of the community center and possibly day in front taking of the up center, yeah. all of those spaces. Yeah, yeah, so I just wanted to mention that. Okay, so there's no amendment to that rec uh, request, and so we'll take a vote on a municipal parking request. Uh, was there a second on it? Second. second. Okay, uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. So yeah, I don't want to get off on a tangent, but um, was there a question you had? It was, was yeah, the, uh, the ceremony was great last year, the Hanukkah, the menorah. My question was, there was a banner left up for almost a week for Chabad or the Berkshires. And it, it um, I didn't know if that would be off-putting to people who are members of other synagogues, etc. And I didn't know if that was something that had been discussed before the event. It, it hasn't been discussed, but I remember that 
Okay. The same thing, so thank it will you. be discussed. Okay, thanks. Okay. okay, so we can move on to general business, Mr. Chairman. All right. Now, so this, oh, go ahead. So we need the first thing is to, to vote a uh, signed employment contract with the uh, town new town manager. We we um, voted on a on a, a contract for new town manager Jay Green, and uh, we did that two weeks ago, executive session, and um, we've got that done. We've got that printed here, and now I want to have Jay come forward and we'll, we'll sign this. I do have a technical question about this, but it, it asked for the chairman's signature. Hmm. You can modify it. I'll, I'll just put it. Cross out you Neil, know, put in yeah, your just name. Yeah, as clerk. And as, as long as the board votes that it's okay for you to sign it, that's all that's okay. So won't. Sorry. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. All right, Jay. Okay. Not, not too much of a ceremony here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So it's municipal business. Yeah. So yeah, the nice pouring, huh? Like a good lawyer, I brought my pen. You got your glasses on, you got to get always like, I'm sure you know what you're doing. <laughs> you're so you're, you're on a hook now, but <laughs> you might have another town that wishes I would. Make sure that we, our changes are going to be there. Yeah, do that. I have a couple of drafts going back and forth, so I just want to make sure the changes we agree on. That's why we did two years. I can always back. Yeah. Okay, so I'll keep this in a safe place. <laughs> <laughs> Make copies. <clears throat> they welcome the board. Thank you. Officially, I guess, Thank welcome the board. Pleasure to be So, next thing on the agenda, we have the annual tax classification hearing. So, our members of the Assessors are here to tell us what we got going. Okay. It's always ready. It's always ready. <laughs> yes. Costly <laughs> dirt. So, um, as, as you all know, I'm Tom Romeo. I'm the chairman of the Board of Assessors. Um, and again, we're here again at this time. First of all, like last year, I just want to, uh, we have Heather Dur um, Durant here, who was our assessor's clerk. and. Um, I tell you, we are just so pleased that she joined our team back in September of 22, and uh, she continues to be a true asset to the town and to the assessor's office. So, here, here. Thank you, Heather. Thank you. In addition to myself, we have Wayne Lemansky. Um, Jamie was unable to, to come tonight. So it seems like every year is uh, interesting from very different perspectives. In regards to the 3,431 properties that were assessed, the board received 11 abatement applications, which four were denied. One, one of those denials was um, forwarded to the ATB, which we prevailed. Um, two were approved as submitted, and um, five were modified based off of inspections and additional information that we collected. This year's values are similar to the projections um, as they were, as they increased but not uh, at the same rate as they did a couple of years ago, thank God. In regards to the values, as you may remember, for state regs, values have to be assessed between 95 and 105% of their full and fair cash value. So for this year, the residential values, um, the, the medium range was about 6%. Last year, that was 4 to 6%. Two years ago, it was 21%. So um, the condos went up 5.9%, last year was 6%, and two years ago it was 24%. But with the condos, there's a couple, um, couple complexes that will see a bigger increase in that. Um, 
But again, the, the, the medium is, is 5.9. But the Birchwood um, complex, the Morgan Manor, and Lenox Heights um, will receive more. Birchwood is like 14%, Morgan Manor is like 28%, and Lenox Heights is like 22%. And that's based off of sales, um, just in terms of what's going on with those. That's what it really boils down to again, doesn't yeah. it, Tom? Yes, as you go through them. Um, so that's what it comes down to. So overall, it was about 5.9%. Commercial and industrial is about 4%. <coughs> Last year it was 6%. Two years ago it was 9.4%. Now, one interesting note, Wayne and I were just talking about the actual total um, real and property value of the town. Is one billion nine hundred and twenty-five million nine hundred ninety thousand three hundred and ten. You can remember when we just <laughs> just went over that. Okay. Um, and the um, commercial industrial is about twenty-five percent of that, or about three hundred and eighty-two million. So, so how do those increases compare to other towns? Um, it's difficult to to do that because you don't know how. Uh, up to date their values are. But according to the uh, recent articles in the paper, it looks like Stockbridge went up about 7.8%, and it looks like Pittsfield went up about 10%, 10.2%. On a different topic, um, we had another good year for tax levy new growth, which was 199,361, which is similar to last year, so 207,304. Um, although it's down from two years ago when it was 309,000. But it still had a good, good growth there. Next year may present more challenges as a, re a residential is projected to increase at higher rates because of the 2024 rates um, with a, a medium assess assessor sales rate of about 83%. And again, you got to remember it's got to be between 95 and 105. And that will be, uh, in particular, to certain areas in town. So not be the whole town, but certain areas. Condos are projected to be about 6 to 7%. But hopefully, again, with the growth on the Fiscal Road, that, that will help soften the impact um, to, the, to the residential side. So um, we also want to thank um, the town accountant, Ann, for helping um, Heather in terms of putting together some of the sub slides that you'll see. So going right to the slides, this classification um, is really governed by Mass General Laws, Chapter 40. This is where the selectmen annually um, first determine the percentage of the local tax levy to be borne by each class. And in determining that, the selectmen shall uh, adapt the residential factor. So at this point in time, you really need to open up um, a public hearing um, so that we can go into that phase. We need to open up a public hearing now? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so I'm going to make a motion to do that. Mr. Mm -hmm. Chairman, I move that we open a public hearing for tax classification. Second. Is this a roll call vote or is this just a regular vote? Yeah. I don't want to say. I don't want to say. We can't go around yet. Anyway, yeah. I have to approach that. Okay. <laughs> so th this slide here just basically tells you what your tax levy, levy limits are. Um, and really what you've got to pay attention to is the, the bottom line. And the tax levy um, percent increases, <coughs> as you see going forward, um, 2025 was 6.55%. And um, so we still have a lot of excess capacity there for, for taxes. And obviously we don't want to spend that. but there's still room there. It's not like we're bumping up to it like other towns. So now in terms of the um, things that you know that affect the tax rate, is the appropriations that come through. And the other thing that will affect the tax rate is the, the, um, the factor of residential versus commercial. So when looking at those factors, go ahead, Josh. Yeah. There you go. Again, the new growth was 199. 361, which was good. And so then as we look at the, the classifications, now, as you remember, any time that the commercial increases at a lower rate than the residential, it basically pushes more of the burden on the residential side. And so when we look at these rates, um, 
these, the tax factors. Last year, we were at 0.923. Um, when, and to, to understand this chart, if we had a, a single tax rate, um, up on top would be the residential would be 1.0. Um, if we had that, the um, you can see the burden where the, the, the average tax would go up 112 for a residential, but the commercial would get like a, a $1,600 deduction. So you know, uh, we, we didn't think that that was the best idea. So last year we went with a 0 0.923. Um, so we ended up with a, a tax rate of nine, $9.10. Um, and because, again, the, the commercial didn't go up quite as high, we felt that we needed to tweak that a little bit. So uh, what the board's recommendation, the Board of Assessors' recommendation, is to have that tax factor as being 0 0.917. And so you can see the, the numbers that you see there, like the 203, that's just the difference between the, the single tax rate. That's not what the, the average tax will be, but that's the difference between that we had a flat. And um, so that's where that factor comes in. Now, how does that impact the, the tax rate itself? You want to go to the next one? So for a single family, with that, with that tax rate um, going down to two cents to 9.05, um, the average change in, in, in that single family house would be $305, and the average change in a um, in the for the typical industrial is $837. For the medium single family tax. <coughs> would be uh, a reduct uh, an increase of $273. So again, because of that difference in values, we thought that that adjustment would be, would be the appropriate change to do. It didn't seem like it would be a great impact on the commercial side, and yet we wanted to give some um, continued relief to the residential side. So our recommendation is, you can go to the next one, our recommendation would be to move to adopt the residential factor of 0.917 for the purpose of determining the fiscal um, 2025 tax rate. Now, our role as assessors is we can just make the recommendation, but your role, you're the only ones that can actually approve the tax rate. Mm -hmm. So we'd be glad to take any questions or concerns. Yeah, <laughs> appreciate all the work yes. you, you yeah. do to this. You explained it very well. Um, I, I tend to sit in on these meetings quite a bit. I, yeah, I don't go do. to all of the meetings, but I go to quite a number of them. Mm -hmm. um, and it's really, uh, it, you guys do an enormous amount of work looking at individual properties, looking at the trends um, for residential rates, looking at the trends for commercial and uh, how it all plays out and they really you know take into account the movement for commercial and industrial versus residential trying not to burden any one side more than the other and i think this is a very fair outcome and that you know things are going to bump up a little bit for everybody um, you know there's still the option that if people feel like they were their tax bill is increased and possibly some few tax bills are, that they can come for abatements and you know show their, their case. As you said, 11 people or 11 individuals or households came to you last year and you know four of them were approved. Um, I think it's very, you guys do a really good job. You work with our um, consultant assessor and you come up with a very fair residential and um, commercial factor. So I, I think this looks terrific. Thank you. Very well said. So, I know you don't have a crystal ball, but uh, at some point, our new growth is going to start to level off. I mean, I've thought that for the last 10 years, but I've been proven wrong every year. But at some point, we're going to start to level off. And that, that's going to shift the burden back onto the, the tax base. Do you have any words of advice for us as to what to do over the next 
some of the yeah, but we're in charge of spending too. Yeah, I mean it, it's just a moving target. I mean, we were. I remember um, was it two years ago when it was three hundred eight thousand. We were really worried in terms of what was going to plummet, and um, right. And the year before that, it was it was even higher because of the work that was done at Maribel and, and stuff like that. But it seems like we, I mean, we keep on running into some of the things now. The for like next year, the, you got to remember everything's like a year behind. Yes. And so next year we'll pick up more in terms of some of the other the car dealerships and the affordable housing um, that complex. And so it seems like we always get something. Um, yeah, it's hard to say. It, it's really hard to say. You know, I think um, some some rational um, controlled growth is is good. And just you got to make sure that it fits with the character of the town. Um, going back to what Mary Beth had said, you know, we thought that you know 11 abatement applications out of 31, 3100 was pretty decent. <laughs> yeah. 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 But, you know, so I, I don't know, Dave. It's it's a tough, it's a hard call. It is. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and it's all of us working together. I and mean, we have to take care of our house as far as spending goes. Right. And then, Correct. And so that's where it comes from, where a lot of it comes from. Correct. Correct. Well, as long as you don't see a big crash coming down in the near future, so. No, we were really worried a couple of years ago when the values went up so, so, so high. And it looks like they, they're, yeah, well, the COVID they're, they're pretty stabilized. So it's skewing everything. Let me, one more question. How, how are the ADUs going to affect the tax rate? I, the I, tax? I, I really don't. Well, I mean, they're going to be assessed at a certain value as to an add-on sure. to the property. Sure. So that could be of some significance if people took advantage. Yeah, that, that you know that would be a, a positive potential. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Tom. Yeah, Tom, yeah. I'm going to ask you one more thing about uh, veterans. The yes. veterans um, the exemption. Yes, at the uh, the annual town meeting, there are some um, improvements for some of the. Um, and Heather could probably explain it better than I can some uh, added benefits that veterans will be eligible for. Yeah. In addition to what they already yeah, In addition to what, the, what they have now. And so um, what we would hope to do is to bring that proposal to the town meeting, um, the annual town meeting. Again, I think that you know any you know, veteran should get as much as they can possibly get. And so um, there's some enhancements there, so we would like to uh, Probably bring that to the town meeting. We'll, we'll brief you in terms of all the details so that we don't have them all ourselves. Mm -hmm. We just know that the commander had brought some information to us and and said, you know, we we um, we'd want to do that. And there's done a great job in terms of helping people fill out um, exemptions or abatements and uh, or exemptions. So um, that's good because there's a lot of different opportunities for people there, and so we. And you've, you've, you also had the senior work off program, Correct. and you've increased um, that we value. We increased the the, uh, the value of that, and also they've um, uh, I was going to say tightened it up, not really tightened it up, structured it so it's easier for people to, to participate and um, and follow through with that. So there's a lot of different ones. Okay. Other than that, we would hope that we would. Well, the first thing we'll have to do is close the public hearing. So I, has a question. Oh. I just had a question about what is the senior work off program? Um, if you are a senior citizen, you may work off a portion of your tax bill by um, working in the municipal sector. Um, there are various programs or various uh, places that you can work within the town. To work off a portion of your of your tax bill. Okay. How do you get more details about that? Where's um, that? You would go to the town clerk or to Co your office. Community center. Community center. Okay. You go to Thank the community you. center. Community center. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chairman. I move that we close the public hearing. Second. Second. Okay. We did a roll call before. Yeah, that's all right. Max Strickland. Yeah, they they were upset. You have to approve. Yeah, we have to. We'll do that now. We're going to the public hearing first, and then we'll approve. Don't be nervous. All that work is for you. Mr. Chairman, I move that we uh, approve the recommendations of the assessors, the board of assessors, to uh, adopt the residential factor, yes. to adopt the class 0.917. Second. 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 Second
as presented. As presented. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you. 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 Okay, we got that out of the way. So now the next thing on the general business is review and approve warrant and discuss preparation for a special town meeting on December 5th, 2024. So I know you've done this already once tonight, Mary Beth, but could you um, just read over the... Absolutely, I can read uh, over the, the warrant for town meeting. Uh, first of all, we'll be having it at the Lennox Memorial Midland High School, located at 197 East Street in Lennox, uh, Thursday, December 5th. 2024 at 7 o'clock in the evening. Um, Article 1 will be to see if the town will vote to waive the reading of the warrant and return of service thereof and to authorize the moderator pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 39, Section 15 to declare a two-thirds vote on voice votes if he deems it so or to take any other action in relation to it. Article 2. And I know my computer and hope to God it's still working. Um, Article 2 will be to see if the town will vote to appropriate from free cash a sum of $1,100,000 to pay for such costs as paving and the maintenance, repair, and construction of town ways and bridges or to take any other action in relation thereto. And I'm just going to save this <coughs> so that I have it. Uh, Article 3 to see if the town will vote to create, in accordance with Chapter 40, Section 5B of the General Laws, a Special Purpose Stabilization Fund, and further, to transfer from free cash the sum of $26 million to be placed in said fund, or to take any other action in relation thereto. And this will require a two-thirds vote. This particular item um, is basically setting aside a Special Purpose Stabilization Fund the $25 million plus a million dollars in earned interest um, that uh, that dollar amount has already seen um, from the GE uh, allocation that the town of Lenox received. Um, and as a special purpose stabilization fund, it will be determined for use uh, by the townspeople at, pre at future town meetings for expenditure. The fourth article is to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash the sum of $71,166.40 in accordance with Chapter 77 of the Acts of 2023, Section 197 of the Opioid Treatment Special Revenue Fund for the purposes identified in the settlement agreements with opioid distributors and opioid makers. This basically will provide um, these opioid settlement funds um, for the town manager to transfer to an eligible um, uh, service provider to assist with uh, those who suffer from opioid or um, substance use disorder um, issues. Article 5, to see if the town will vote to appropriate the sum of $103,040.31 from the town's short-term rental funds certified at the close of fiscal year 24 to the town manager for transfer to the Lennox Affordable Housing Trust or to take any other action in relation thereto. This is 25% of the short-term rental um, funds that uh, were appropriated last year um, at a similar town meeting. Last year it was about $95,000. This year it's $103,000. And this is to help the Lennox Affordable Housing Trust conduct their programs with regard to first-time home buying programs uh, owner-occupant housing rehab, emergency rental assistance, and other program programmatic uh, opportunities as they may arise. Article 6 is to see, and this is, uh, these are, the next two are zoning bylaw amendments. So Article 6 is to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw by deleting section 9.2 accessory dwelling unit and replacing it with new section 9.2 accessory accessory dwelling unit 
and by deleting the definition of an accessory dwelling unit in Section 4 definitions and replacing it with a new definition, and by deleting H.4 accessory dwelling unit in Section 5.2 table of uses and inserting a new A.3 accessory dwelling unit in Section A of residential uses as set out in a handout available at town meeting in substantially the same form as discussed at the planning board's November 12th public hearing. And a majority vote will be required for this particular um, article. Uh, and finally, to see if the town will vote to amend the zoning bylaw by deleting and replacing the existing definition of short-term rental from section four definitions with a new definition of short-term rental and by amending 8.4 short-term rental of residential properties by adding 8.4.2.5 to general requirements for all short-term rentals, thereby prohibiting the <coughs> use of accessory, of accessory dwelling units as short-term rentals as set out in a handout available at town meeting and as discussed at the planning board's November 12, 2024 public hearing. And that change will require a two-thirds vote. So the last two articles, Article 6 and Article 7, are available for viewing on the town's website at, um, if you go to the drop-down menu that says, how do I? Um, you go, how do I, in the menu, and then there will be special town meeting December 5th, 2024, and the two um, articles, uh, the, the specific definitions the planning board has drawn up are available there for review. Thank you, Mary Beth. Uh, sure. And also, it should be noted that the first five articles concerning funding or money were approved by the Finance Committee. Yes. Um, yes. And I want to thank you for the effort you put in to write these articles. You didn't do the last two, but you did. A, I know you did a lot of work. Anna helped you a lot. A lot of people around town yeah. all. But good job. Thanks. Um, do you have a question? Yeah, sorry. sorry. Um, there was noise in the hall and so I, I missed Mary Beth when you read article two did you say appropriate the 1.1 million from oh, free funds cash. and then and then seek reimbursement from the chapter 90 funding I did not say that but I have that written here on my notes to seek reimbursement through chapter 90 funds and so I read what I had on my computer it's a draft I'm going to be going back to our attorney tomorrow morning to make sure that I insert everything correctly, and he will approve the warrant before we post it tomorrow. Okay, thank you. I just yeah, I know it's, 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 it's a good question. Yeah. It's a good point, and thank you. I agree with you. We just yeah. have to make sure that it's okay. To yeah. Do okay. Thank you. Yeah. Perfect. Thanks. You had a question, Dave? No. Okay. Um, well, I don't have any questions. Never mind. Tony, have any more questions? No. We're good. <coughs> so, Mr. Chairman. I move to approve the, the uh, warrant articles as presented and to be posted by tomorrow, Thursday, 11-21. Second. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. That takes care of our uh, regular meeting or our regular business for tonight. Our next regular meeting will be December 4th, and that's uh, the day before town meeting. But we do have to meet that night. Now those things already we have on our plates. So. We'll make a motion to adjourn. Happy Thanksgiving to everybody. And I move to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.